Hello boys and girls. It is so good to be here with you today. I am so glad you joined me for our fourth session of Compassion Camp. The theme today is Along the Way, How Compassion Helps Us Be Present with Each Other. I have some questions for you and I'd like you to answer with the first thing that comes to your mind. Who is always there for Minnie Mouse? Who is always there for Iron Man? Who is always there for Harry Potter? Who is always there for people in danger? Who is always there for people who are sick? Who is always there for children? Who is always there for you? Now that may seem pretty easy, but I'm wondering what does always there even mean? What does it mean to be there for someone? Does it mean you're always by their side? What does it mean to be there for the sick, for the poor, for your family, for yourself? Another way of saying this is being present with someone. If I want to be present with a friend, I wait, listen, and ask how I can help them. Today we are present with each other. Let's take a few seconds of silence to be with one another. Whether we're together or apart, God is always with us, and we can be present with each other in many ways too. Today's song is about being present with God and each other, no matter what the situation. It is called Face to Face, and enjoy it, and I will see you back in a little bit. Face to face or far away, God is present among us. Let's sing together. Face to face. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed the song Face to Face. Face to Face or Far Away, God is present among us. Listen to the Spirit. I am with, here with you. As close as your breath, your beating heart, I am here with you. As far as you go, no matter the time, I am here with you. 
Today's Bible lesson is about three women, Ruth, Naomi, and Orpah, who were present with each other during a time that was, they were hurting. After your lesson today, you will hear from Mrs. Shoemake, who will give us ways to be present and to help others. And now, let's pray. Loving Spirit, you are active and alive, always moving and stirring within and around us. Please be an encouraging wind in our backs, giving us open minds and soft hearts to follow where you lead. Make us flexible and present in each moment that we might embrace compassion by letting go of what we expected. Amen. Hi, boys and girls. I am so glad to share part of your Vacation Bible School Week with you guys. Um, and I'm really excited about the fact that we're going to talk about compassion all week long. So that's great. And um, I looked up the meaning of compassion, and y'all probably talked about it through the days uh, throughout this week. But um, I found two meanings that I really like. One is compassion is the concern and care for the suffering of others. The second definition I liked is being aware of the others in distress, along with that, a desire to do something about it. It's a good word. Um, so this today, our Bible story reference story is from the book of Ruth. So I wonder who's going to be in the story. It's a silly question. It's going to be Ruth. And Ruth is a great um, book of the Bible. It's very short, but it tells about an amazing woman. And we're going to be talking about the very beginning of this book, chapters one, chapter 1, verses 1 through 18. Also, I wanted to show you, this is sort of the story, too. And I wanted to show you, this is the book, the storybook we use in first and second grade. And here is a picture of the story. So kind of take a snapshot in your brain. And this is what we're going to read about. This is Naomi. This is Ruth. And this is Oprah. So I'm going to read you a story. In Judea, in Judea, there once was a man named Amalek, who was worried about his, how his family would survive the famine. He took his wife, Naomi, and their two sons, Milan and Chilion, to the country of Moab. They settled there and made a life among the people there. Soon their sons married two women named Oprah and Ruth. Sadly, Naomi's husband passed away, and then her two sons died too. Now, Naomi missed her family of, from Judea, and she wanted to go back home. So she began the long journey back. As was the custom for daughters, by law, Oprah and Ruth followed her. But Naomi insisted they stay in their home in Moab. She said, Go back to your family. May the Lord deal kindly with you, and as you have dealt with your husbands and me. Peace be with you, she said. Then Naomi hugged them goodbye, and they all wept together. But Oprah and Ruth were determined to follow her. And Naomi once again tried to persuade them, do not ruin your chance of marriage and having your own family. If you stay with me, I have nothing and I can't give you anything. I have lost everything and my heart is so broken and bitter. They all cried together once again. Oprah decided to go back to Moab, but Ruth clung to Naomi even more. Naomi said to Ruth, don't stay with me. Go back with Oprah. But Ruth opened up her heart and said, 
Don't make me leave you. Where you go, I will go. Where you make your home, I will make my home. Your people will be my people. Your God will be my God. And where you die and are buried, I will be buried there also. I will be your family. When Naomi saw that she couldn't change Ruth's mind, her heart softened and she accepted Ruth and they traveled back to Judea together. Ruth took care of Naomi for the rest of her life and Naomi loved Ruth like, it was her, like she was her own daughter. This story tells us about compassion and sometimes it's hard to know what direction to take. But if we are present to the experiences of those around us, we can trust God's Spirit to show us the compassionate way. Remember how Naomi showed compassion to Ruth and Oprah by encouraging them to return to their families? Ruth showed compassion to Naomi by going with her. Oprah showed compassion by supporting Ruth in her decision to stay with Naomi. And Ruth and Oprah, Ruth and Naomi, were com showed compassion when they supported Oprah in their own in in her own way to show compassion by going home. And Oprah showed us that, that she had to go a different way. They all showed us that there are many ways to follow the Spirit leading us to love and care. So boys and girls, I wanted to show you this picture. Remember how it said, we just said that we need to be open to compassion. And here's a picture. It looks like a modern version of the Ruth and Naomi. But it's kind of also like shows you that it's kind of a modern version too, that you need to be aware of how we can be, show compassion to others. And I found a couple of examples of that that I think are really cool that you might enjoy knowing about. There's a boy named Je Je Jeremiah Moosen from Percival, Virginia, which is up uh, northern Virginia area. Jeremiah found out that some people didn't have shoes. He asked others at his school to help. They brought enough shoes to to the hall that they to the school that it, they lined the halls of the school with shoes. Jeremiah and his family traveled to Haiti to deliver the shoes, and they measured the children's feet. They washed their feet and they gave them each a pair of shoes. That's pretty cool. I love that. There's another story. Roberto Clemente was a professional baseball player from Puerto Rico, and he played for the Pittsburgh Pirates. He was a great player, but he was remembered most by showing his kindness during his off-season in a lot of different ways. So he's a famous person that did some awesome stuff. Okay, here's the last one. This one's also pretty cool. Maria Keller from Minnesota loved to read. When she was eight years old, she found out that a lot of people didn't have books. So what could she do? Maria did book drives, asking people to donate books and she gave the books to hospitals and to schools around the world. By the time she was 13 years old, she had given away a million books. Isn't that amazing? So all of these people and many more examples along the way observed people that needed more or needed some help, and they actually did a good, good deeds to make it happen. So let's bow our head and pray. 
Dear God, help us to see the needs of others. Help us to be brave to show kindness, love, and compassion to others. We know that you will lead us each in our own special way to follow God's spirit of love and care. Amen. Thank you, everybody, for being a part of Vacation Bible School. I know I enjoyed being a part of your week. Um, God bless you and your families, and we hope to see you at church in the future. Bye. Hi there, boys and girls. I hope you're doing well. In case you don't know me, my name is Paget, and this is my dining room. Welcome, and I'm happy to be with you here during our virtual Bible School. Feels a little bit weird, doesn't it? But that's okay. We're going to have fun with it. So originally, I was not going to be able to help with Bible school because I was going to be in Barcelona, Spain for a conference. I know. How cool is that? But the conference got canceled. Good news is it's rescheduled for next year. But even better news is, is I get to be with you for Bible school this year. And if you've been in Bible school before, you know that usually I talk about missions. So I want to talk to you about missions today. First of all, I want to make sure you know what missions is. Because one year I asked, what's missions? And one of the boys says, it's when a spy gets a special mission and has to go out and do something. I was like, oh, we got to make sure we know what missions is. So what missions is, is when people take time to help others. And usually it's to help spread God's love. So there are special people called missionaries. And it is their job to go and help people and spread God's love. But you and I can be missionaries too. So what I want to do today is tell you about one of the missionary couples that I learned about. So I went on to the website for the Cooperative Baptist Fellowship. That's an organization that we are aligned with. And guess what? I found missionaries that work in Barcelona, Spain, which is where I was going to be. So let me introduce to them to you. Can you see this picture here? Their names are Matt and Michelle Norman, and you can see the parents there, and evidently they have a boy and a girl, a son and a daughter, and they work in Barcelona, Spain. Well, I learned some things about Barcelona that I didn't know. I'm kind of happy I learned them before I go on my trip. But in Barcelona, they have a very large number of immigrants, people that come to that country maybe for a job or maybe to get away from the things that are happening bad in their country, and they settle in Barcelona. Another thing about Barcelona is that there are very few people who believe in God or go to churches. So you have these few number of people in Spain who are involved in churches, and then these immigrants who maybe at their home were involved in churches, but now there aren't very many active churches. So what Matt and Michelle Norman do is they connect the local churches to these immigrant groups and get them connected and working together. So they work with local churches to connect with the community, they do trainings for those churches. They have Bible studies. And if the church is working on a local ministry to help people, they help with that as well. So that's the work that the Normans do in Barcelona, Spain. Let me show you them again. Aren't they cute? And then I want to tell you some things that you can do because you may be saying to me, Paget, I am just a kid. I don't have a job yet. And it can't be my job to help people. I I'm too little for that. But I have some ideas for you. So here's the first one. One thing that I've seen some people do in my neighborhood is they go outside with sidewalk chalk and on their driveway or in front of their house, they write a message of encouragement for the people in the neighborhood that might be driving by. Huh, mom and dad will thank me for this one. Another thing that you could do is to help clean around the house. Maybe decide to straighten up your room or clean up the toys. That's a great way to help people out and to show your parents and your family that you care about them. Another thing that I've been thinking about is there are certain people right now when we're all closed up, we're getting a little bit more open, but a lot of things have been closed. But there are certain people who have had to work no matter what. I think about those nice people at the grocery store who are bagging my groceries. They have to be there and they may not want to or they might be a little bit afraid to because of the sickness that's out there. So I try every time I go out and about and somebody's helping me with something at a store to be especially kind and to use my manners and say thank you and be smile and just give them a good message. Another thing that I thought about is if you have a nursing home or a retirement place near you, 
Sometimes those have been closed recently and they haven't been able to have as many visitors as they want to. I know I was talking to my grandfather this past weekend and he used to be able to get one person to come in at a time. They're back down to not letting anybody in anymore. So he's not able to see all of his regular visitors. So what you could do is you could become a pen pal with someone from the nursing home. And if you want to have somebody from church for that, you could reach out to the church office and they could recommend somebody that you could become a pen pal with. And you could work on your writing, but also bring some extra cheer to that resident. Another thing that I saw on a walk the other day is somebody in their glass front door had a sign just encouraging people. I saw another one in a window and I thought that was such a neat idea to encourage people as they're walking by. And one other thing, I live right next to a park and when I walk over there, I've seen a lot of painted kindness rocks. So maybe you could go out, paint a rock and leave it somewhere for somebody to be helpful. So boys and girls, look for times to spread God's love to others and show that you can help.